What's up guys, I'm super excited to show you one of the most useful things I've built. It's my waterproof solar generator and portable radio station in an ammo can. I've been testing this thing for two whole years now, including in the rain and snow, and I can honestly say it works fantastic. It's the perfect balance of size, portability, power capability, and communications capability I've ever seen on YouTube. Let's get into all the features. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm pretty proud of how many features I was able to cram into this little ammo can. Starting with the solar generator portion, inside we've got a 16 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. We've got a solar charge controller capable of waking up these lithium iron phosphate batteries once they've been fully drained. Not every charge controller can do this. To charge the battery, we have SAE 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter DC barrel jacks and Anderson power pole inputs. This will cover most solar panel connectors. As outputs, we also have SAE, Anderson power pole, and two DC barrel jacks perfect for charging radios. We also have standard 12 volt cigarette lighter plugs to connect car accessories or even a small inverter, and two USB ports for charging phones and tablets. We've got three LED lights on here two low power floodlights that can run for over 100 hours and one super bright LED that can run for 68 hours. Now for the really exciting stuff, let's move to the inside. Here we have the Anytone 578 UV3 Pro tri-band radio with GPS antenna for it right here and an antenna connector right here. And I've got the Bluetooth speaker mic remote for it. This radio is an absolute beast, and I'll get more into why it's the perfect SHTF radio in a bit. We've also got a cavity to store the Bluetooth mic, as well as some cables, two banana connector screw terminal combos, and some reflective paint for distress signals. Oh, and of course, all the components are water resistant, so there's no problem leaving this out in the rain or snow. Now there's a variety of reasons why you'd want to have something like this. It's fantastic for power outages. We've all been there. The power goes out and you're scrounging around for that old flashlight in your junk drawer, only for the battery to be dead. You can use your phone light for a little bit, but that's not practical long term. With the solar ammo can 16 amp hour battery, you can run these two one watt LED floodlights over 100 hours. Or if you need to go looking for something, you can use the super bright three watt LED for 68 hours. And while I'm waiting for the power to come back on, I can charge my phone or plug in a small inverter and cool myself off for a bit. But the biggest feature is the radio. Not only is it both an FM and DMR radio capable of 50 watts, but it also has the ability to act as a cross-band, cross-mode repeater. This means in an SHTF scenario, I can set this up on a mountain with a solar panel and use it as a repeater pretty much indefinitely in all weather conditions. And if I get lost with no cell service, I can use the radio's GPS coordinates to call for help. So to design this, I modeled every single component in Fusion 360. This took a really long time, but if I was gonna squeeze in as much stuff as possible, I had to be sure everything would fit and be in a functional position, meaning I can't just put components in random places just because it fits. It took a couple of iterations, but I got everything fitting exactly how I wanted. I also designed a few 3D printed components that hold things in place and printed them myself, but the main panel that holds everything was too big to print on my Ender 3, so I had it printed by Shapeways in nylon. Now I should have done some fit checks before ordering, but I'm impatient. Nothing a Dremel can't fix. While I was waiting for Shapeways to print and ship my part, I used the project tool in Fusion 360 to create a sketch with all the holes for each component, scaled it in Word, and printed it out. Then I just taped it to the ammo can and cut the holes. The wiring is an absolute rat's nest. Essentially, I just connected all the inputs together, plugged them into the solar panel input on the charge controller, and connected all the outputs together through a fuse box, and then connected all the outputs to the solar charge controller output. I left the radio directly connected to the battery since it probably draws more current than the charge controller can handle.
If there's anything specific you'd like to see about this build, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.